Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and blondish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and mossy. Piedmont Biofuels is a community scale biodiesel plant. And by that we mean that um, we're small, so we collect cooking oil. Most of them come from restaurants. Some of them come from industrial plants, so we'll buy almond oil from the makeup factory and then so on and so forth. So we were running on scraps. So in come the waste fats, oils, and greases, and then we just convert those into biodiesel and we distribute those out to our community. Our plant is capable of making a million gallons of fuel a year. North Carolina burns four million gallons of diesel fuel a day. But in the Piedmont world view, we need to get away from our energy infrastructure as it stands now, which is sort of a top-down and oppressive energy regime. So what we've set out to do and what we preach is, you know, the next hundred million gallons of fuel should not come from a giant plant in the harbor. It should come from 100 little community-scale biodiesel plants. So today we're installing our enzymatic biodiesel reactor. It's going to revolutionize the biodiesel industry, give us access to lower quality feedstocks. It's a more energy efficient process. So what will happen in the future is the fuel will be increasingly precious, extremely expensive, and it will be used for the best purposes. And we could argue about what those might be. Maybe sending um, children to school on buses or um, powering trains or powering ferry boats or something like that. Uh, How do you organize to make your fuel going in good use? Well, that's a really good question. It's, you know, we don't want a world in which we're, you know, filling up biodiesel powered bombers to go uh, you know, kill people for resources. Mm -hmm. Not interesting to us. In that kind of um, uh, industry, how how you be sure that it, it will not grow, it will not at the end. Oh, well, it's you know that's a really good question. It's I think that the human animal has a problem in that if you can make a gallon, maybe you should make a hundred gallons, and if you can make a hundred gallons, maybe you should make a million gallons, and if you can make a million, why don't you make a hundred million gallons? And so you you do have to check greed along the way. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies you know. What's already happening in a lot of third world countries is that they're devoting land to energy production that could be growing food for people. A few people are getting a good income from that, while a lot of people are being barely staying alive. Here we've got to keep that big picture in mind that any land that's going into fuel production is not producing food. I mean, there are lands that can't produce food for some reason or other, like they're contaminated with some kind of bad chemicals or something, and so it makes sense to at least use those for growing energy crop. So it's really hard for me to wrap my mind around the concept of taking something that we would produce that has that high a food value and just making it into fuel. At least get one food use out of that oil before you make it into fuel.